Hey guys, 4 Eyes here, and I'm doing something a little bit different because I'm... This is probably going to get me into a lot of drama, but I'm going to be calling out Velocify today for some things he did that I kind of personally disagree with. Recently he made two videos on the new feature coming up in Pokemon Sun and Moon called Hyper Training, and I kind of disagree with a lot of points he made in that, but I'm going to be getting into that later because first I actually want to bring up the major issue I have with him, which is that he actually deleted my comment for calling him out. And um, as you can see right here, we have the first comment that I made. And it's going to make more sense once you watch the video, which I'm going to be putting up later and responding to. But j just first, I wanted to show this. What I commented was, I'm still waiting for you to explain how playing Bike Simulator 2016, aka Breeding, I, that's just nicknamed Poke Fun at it, is more important than learning team building and how to predict and all the stuff in Pokemon that actually takes skill, which would make your League of Legends analogy make sense. Spending hours with your thumb on the D-pad doesn't make you a better player. To which he responded, you are a spoiled kid for calling it Bike Simulator, lol. And he didn't address any of my points in this, he just made fun of me for calling breeding Bike Simulator. So then I went ahead and I replied with, it's nickname to me, mm, sorry. It's just a nickname for it made to poke fun how tedious breeding could be. You still haven't answered how it makes you better at the game itself. And something kind of interesting happened after, the reason why I have it screen capped right here in my notifications is because shortly after it went up, he, the, as you can see right here in the original one, it says view all two replies. Once you click on that, nothing, nothing except for my original comment and his reply to it. He actually deleted this comment off of it. So then I went ahead and I went, did you seriously just... Did you seriously just delete my first reply, or did YouTube screw up? Because, you know, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. I didn't think anybody would actually delete my comment like that. Well, then he just deletes his reply. <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't actually stop there. You'll see, notice this is a screen from a screen cap that I took that kind of screwed up. But as you'll see right here, it says um, three hours ago. Three hours ago when, was when I made this comment from when I took the screen cap. And then... If we go on to it, I went ahead, I did a little snooping, and I went into incognito mode, so that way I'd be logged out. As you're right here, the window is now in incognito mode. And look at this, two hours ago, two hours ago, four hours ago. He deleted my entire comment, but for some reason I'm only able to see it when I'm logged in. But I just, I think this kind of draws a little bit of a thing that, like, if he replies to a comment, then you call him out for not actually addressing your points, or and he disagrees with the point you made, he will delete your comment. And it, I, I find that kind of weird, though, that he did that only with mine when he has these other people who disagree with him. But it's just... I have a huge problem with this type of censorship, censoring anybody who disagrees with you. And I just... I wanted to call out Rosa for this, because he's a, he's a pretty big channel, 225,000 subscribers, and known by a pretty good amount of people. But... Ugh. Let's just... I, I'm, I'll stop it right here. He deleted my comment. It, it was wrong. And... I hope that this just I, I hope this kind of brings light to this situation. And now let's get on to the video response. Oh, quick thing before I get started. Um I actually cut out a bit of the video like in between parts where I'm talking in this response. So it will jump around a bit at points in Volusify's video, but the reason for that is that I just didn't want to show the whole video because there are parts where he repeats himself a bit and parts where he just kind of goes in circles. And so I just did that to speed this up so that way this video wouldn't be 40 minutes long. And because there are also parts where I just don't really know how to respond to him, I'll admit. So I do actually recommend you guys go and watch the video, even though it's it's kind of stupid and be giving him views. But just, I recommend you guys go and do that, because it would be a bit more essential to understanding the video. I didn't realize it while I was making my video, but hyper training is literally the worst thing to ever happen to Pokemon. Ah! <laughs> oh god! Are you okay? No. <laughs> Jokes aside, he starts off his video calling this the worst thing to happen to Pokemon. And I'm honestly really confused as to where he's getting that from, because does does this affect the main game in any way? No, it only affects competitive. Okay, how does it make the competitive scene any worse than introducing basically, basically VGC 2016 rules, which completely centralized the VGC metagame even further than it already was? So here, let's just let's just see what he has to say and how this is apparently the worst thing ever. And before all you hackers out there go and dislike this video, honestly, you guys need to be leaving a like. Whoever hates me should like my videos instead. You guys win. Hackers have won 
on this day because the Pokemon company with this decision has literally rolled over and said, we don't care. Hack, cheat, do whatever you want. We just do not want to deal with this anymore. Personally, I fail to see how this is related to hacking in any way at all. Like, sure, okay, maybe it is a little bit related to injection, but it kind of just seems like they were giving us the thing that we wanted for a long time, which is a way to manually raise IVs in-game. We haven't had that for a long time. All we've had is breeding, and we've been requesting that for a long time, that either we get some way to easily raise IVs in-game, or that IVs are just removed completely. This gives us that. And this has been shown, even though the rules state that even if your Pokemon has a legal ability, legal moves, legal stats, everything like that, it is a cheated Pokemon if it has been obtained through ginning, hacking, power saves, PK hex, any game modification, even breeding hacked parents. This is actually a rule that I don't get the inclusion of, because having a Pokemon that is completely normal, legal abilities, everything, and is completely undetectable from a cheated one, doesn't really give you an advantage. It all it does is saves time. Walk, going around in circles on a, on a bike at the Battle Frontier or at the Battle Resort does not give you a an inherent advantage like in battle if you've injected instead. All it does is save you a bit of time so that way you don't basically get bored and have to watch YouTube videos or something while breeding. The, the Pokemon are just as strong either way. Rules are very straight. If they're so strict, then why are you complaining about them giving up on trying to detect hacking? It's a natural wild-caught Pikachu that has pretty bad stats, but with the use of one bottle, bottle cap, it's an absolute baller that has a 6 IV beast. Isn't that a good thing, though? Like, if one IV that was absolutely crucial, like let's say you were trying to breed a physical attacker and you end up getting zero in attack or something, and you've been breeding forever and you just don't want to keep doing it, doesn't this help? Because now you can just go ahead and pop in the bottle cap into the Pokemon's mouth or whatever it does, and it's done. It's it's a good Pokemon. It's ready to battle. I fail to see how this is a bad thing to you, Verlissify. So pretty much, the Pokemon company has then turned around and given the middle finger to every single legitimate player out there. Wait, what? I, I just explained how this helps legitimate players. It, it, it's good for those who breed, and a stat gets messed up. How does how does this give the middle finger to those people, Verlissify? And it makes breeding absolutely useless. And why is breeding now being useless a bad thing? This is like complaining about like when Gen 2 was introduced about how catching <laughs> multiples of Pokemon was now useless. I, I don't I don't see the connection here that people have spent thousands of hours perfecting breeding, getting as good at it as possible, building up an absolute bank of having any kind of breedable possible. And now they don't have to rely on that bank every time, as well as the entry level being lower now for people who want to get into the game and want to be good at it because they don't have to spend all this time now building up that bank that you just mentioned. Isn't that a good thing? It's it's now easier to get into competitive for those who are, for the first time, getting into it. Like, there's a lot of breeders out there that have grinded to not get 6 IV dittos. Like, if you have a 6 IV ditto, it's, it's hacked. You One, why would they not want to grind to get a 6 IV ditto? Two, how do you know it's hacked? Do you, do you have some magical hack te detecting advice where you go boop 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 oh this pokemon's hacked this pokemon's hacked despite it looking completely legal it was caught here on this date but nope nope it it's hacked definitely hacked that the, i it is because i king verlissify detector of hacks say so all of the offspring of that pokemon are illegal to use but at the same time the pokemon company refuses to enforce this at all but earlier in the video didn't you say that the rules were strictly enforced and also, how are they legal if they are the exact same as anything that would have been bred at, out of two IV dittos, multiple chains of them, but are it, it all does is save time. Again, I don't see how even just breeding from a hacked parent it can make something illegal. It's Also, if you get the hacked parent over something like Wonder Trade, let's say, you, you don't even know. 
Like, there's no way to tell this. It's a complete witch hunt if you claim that something is hacked and there is nothing to prove it. So that's what this is showing. What they're showing is, hey, as long as you catch your Pokemon in game or at least hatch an egg at some point, you can hack a bottle cap in. We're not going to be able to detect it. And then you make your Pokemon a six IV boss, which is almost impossible. I would like to argue that getting a six IV Pokemon is not as impossible as list by claims right here. Because once you get um, two Pokemon with five IVs that have different sets, it's only really a matter of time until that sixth one gets passed down if you're using Destiny Knot. And it's just not making much sense, his logic right here, on how it's it's this is a bad thing and that it enforces hacking, or that it reinforces hacking. Because even if you get the bottle cap legitimately and then you have a six IV Pokemon, are you going to claim that that one's hacked? No, it's... It's a complete witch hunt that Verlissify is trying to start right here for any for any like six IV Pokemon he spots. He's gonna go that tax, that tax, that tax. How do I know? Oh, it's six IVs. It's a witch hunt. Like breeding, it takes forever. It could take hours to get a six IV Pokemon, and six IVs are absolutely unnecessary because of nature's. The nature is going to drop a stat, and it's usually gonna be like a special attacker losing attack or something like that. So why would it need thirty one attack IVs? Well, Verlisfy, considering your competitive background, I figured you would know this, but there's this thing called mixed attackers. They include Infernape, Tornadus, Greninja even. Their mixed attackers need 31 IVs and all those stats, and then it will choose a nature that drops like its defense or special defense. It doesn't... I don't... It, there are cases where Pokemon would need 6 IVs. Or you just happen to get lucky while breeding, and maybe your Pokemon that only needs 5 IVs has 6 IVs. Again, witch hunt. Witch hunt. Same with soft resetting. Anyone that has soft reset in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire just had hundreds of hours stripped away from them because soft resetting doesn't matter anymore. You pop a bottle cap on your legendary Pokemon, now you just only have to worry about the nature. Wait. Are you seriously complaining about time spent in the past now compared to the time it's going to take in the future? Because that Did you complain when you got your driver's license too? Because this is what that's like. You complaining when you get your driver's license because now all the time you spent walking or biking everywhere is now useless because now you can just get in your car and drive to Georgia or wherever you want to go. It's... It, it doesn't make sense to complain about time spent in the past now that there is a faster method. That is how progress works. Things become faster. Did you complain when the breeding became easier in the 6th generation because in the 5th generation it took forever? No, you didn't. You probably rejoiced. I think that that's the only thing that breeding will be good for right now. The only use for breeding will be having like a nature th Or hidden abilities, or egg moves, or if you really want it to be a shiny. Those will still exist too, you know. Now another weird thing is that we can see right here, this looks like the blue pentagon of the Alola region maybe? So there's gonna be like 7th generation uh, legal Pokemon, which means all of your work in the 6th generation is now further invalidated. Oh no, now I have to get everything to good stats again like I did when 6th gen started. This already happened before and I didn't hear you complaining then. Also, Verlissify, don't you think that if they're doing another reset on legal Pokemon, that this could be why they introduced the Bottle Cap method? To make it easier to get your perfect Pokemon again? Food for thought. I think the thing is, since a lot of these hackers, they're either ignorant to the fact or they've accepted it. Because no matter how you look at it, it doesn't matter if Pokemon's legal stats or anything like that is a cheated Pokemon. Wow, that is one contradicting statement if I've ever heard one right there. Even if the Pokemon has legal stats, it's a cheated Pokemon. Ugh. Again. Witch. Hunt. So, they're, they might hack in bottle caps, but then they could still probably cheat the EVs anyways, because what it shows is hackers don't want to do any work. Wow, you really cracked the Da Vinci code right there, didn't you, Verlissify? We just want to save time on something that is tedious and kind of unnecessary. Good job. Pretty much all you're doing is removing any of the effort it takes to make legitimate Pokemon. Guys, look at all the effort breeding takes. 
Oof. Man, I sure am getting tired. I'm hungry. Man, all this effort really tiring me out while reading all these Pokemon and putting in all this effort. Because what happens if I get a Pokemon off the Wonder Trade? Someone hacks in Bottle Caps, I get a Pokemon off the Wonder Trade, and then I take it off and put in my items. Well, how are you supposed to know at that point? Exactly. That is the point I've been trying to make this whole time. You just don't know because there is no difference between a hacked Pokemon that is done correctly and a legitimate Pokemon aside from the time spent to make them. The hacking Pokemon does not make your Pokemon inherently stronger. It's, it's the exact same. Now maybe the Pokemon company has like some kind of super secret hack check that if you use PK Hex or Power Saves or whatever game modification that you choose to have, it'll be detectable. Like, and explain how they would do this. Again, I really want to know how they would implement this without it being a complete witch hunt. Honestly, with the sixth generation, you could have banned so many people. You could have caught so many cheaters because this Pokemon suddenly exists in your game without the use of Pokebank, without the use of anything, or Pokemon stats magically change between saves. Like, that would be super easy to detect. And if it was so super easy to detect, don't you think, Felicify, that they would have implemented this in the game? They, they would have implemented that. It, there's no doubt in their minds that they would have implemented that if there was a way to do it. Something tells me that there probably isn't a way to do it, and it's not as easy as you are saying it is to detect a hacked Pokemon. Now, I'm not here to, be, to tell you guys to cheat, and to tell you guys that it's ha hacking is okay, or give you a guide on how to hack. This is the truth. I'm actually really confused why he had to clarify that he's not here to tell us how to hack when he just spent like the last, I don't even know how many minutes, telling us that hacking is bad and evil and you're the devil if you do it. Like look at this, it's its own feature. Hyper training, strengthen your Pokemon. They're broadcasting this to the millions of people that are going to watch this trailer, the millions of people that visit the Pokemon website that go on this features page. And they're not going to put in some kind of silly restriction like, oh by the way, hyper trained Pokemon can't be used in a competitive battle. So what you're saying is, they're advertising their new feature? My god, the horror! This is a normal thing for companies to do, Verlissify. So this can really only look like some kind of cop-out to not deal with cheating anymore, and it's like the most upsetting thing ever. Alternatively, it could look like a cop-out to keep IVs in the game instead of removing them since they're a completely useless feature aside from hidden powers. You know, that, that's kind of a thing. Anyone that hacks, anyone that cheats cheats Pokemon, anyone that uses PK Hex power saves, they are not a true Pokemon fan. They do not abide by the spirit of the game. Ho ho ho! Oh boy, Verlissify, you just opened up a whole new can of worms with that statement right there. Because you just called me not a real fan of Pokemon. I think the fact that I have played diligently through all six generations just thus far, own basically every game and a good portion of the side games, and spend a pretty good amount of time dedicated to trying to get better at competitive Pokemon, that I'm a pretty good fan of Pokemon. But there you go saying I'm I'm not a fan of Pokemon because I like to save time when it comes to getting something with good IVs. I'm trying to figure out where the leap in logic is there that you go from saving time to not a true Pokemon fan. Also, last I checked, it the catchphrase of the series is gotta catch them all, not gotta breed them all. There's a difference there. So wouldn't the spirit of it be if they were hacking in Pokemon that they haven't caught yet? Which, by the way, is something I don't do. I only, do, I only bring in Pokemon that I've already caught. Just, um, I, yeah, I don't. I got nothing. How, I, I, you can't just call somebody not a true fan. It doesn't work that way. Being a fan of something is entirely subjective. They're rewarding the dishonest players and hackers, and they're punishing the honest players. How? How are they punishing honest players by giving them an easier way to get IVs? There's, again... There's a little disconnect here between your logic, and I'm trying to find where it is. So if you guys enjoyed the video. Well, I didn't. Fuck, there's no enjoying this video.
guess that makes two of us then. Anyway, that was the first of the two videos he made on the subject, and I'm going to move on now to the second one he made, which most of it is responding to comments, but there's a pretty good amount of, of stuff in the beginning that he says that I kind of wanted to tear into and look at. I just finished recording the video, but I made a realization at the end of the video that needs to be the start of this video as to why hypertraining is absolutely useless. You hear that, everybody? Hypertraining is as useless as the move Splash. It does absolutely nothing for you. Raising your IVs has nothing that it can do for you at all because it is a useless feature. God dang it, Relicify, why do you do this? And that's time. A lot of people are saying that the biggest complaint about IV breeding is that it takes so much time and that hypertraining will reduce the amount of time, thus encourage more players to be legitimate. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, homebrew has been getting harder and harder to actually keep on your 3DS lately, and it's kind of turning... And the fact that hypertraining is now going to be a feature is actually kind of turning me over to the side of doing this because now I just don't have to update homebrew every few months when Nintendo patches it out again. <laughs> It's, it makes this a lot easier to do for those who want to play legitimately, or for those who even don't want to play legitimately. I'm having trouble finding the complaints about how this actually encourages hacking. That's not going to happen. Pikachu is level 100. You need a level 100 Pokemon to hyper-train, so that's going to take hours right there. Alright, that's, that's, that's a fair enough point right there. I'll give him that one. But if, if, you're gonna, if you allow me to play the speculation game right here... The, if they bring back secret bases, Blissey bases are going to be a thing again, and getting a Pokemon to level 100 is going to take no time at all. <laughs> oh, man, I really hope they bring back bas Blissey bases now. Now, if a bottle cap is in any way time-consuming, it's just going to be faster than the IV train, so people are just going to hack anyways. This offers no reason for players to stop hacking. That Hackers are going to hack regardless. Hackers gonna hack! Okay, that was kind of a stupid joke, but anyway, the thing is that, yeah, if it's time-consuming, yeah, maybe it will uh, we'll just still probably inject in bottle caps. But even so, isn't it still nice that we actually still just have a way to raise IVs in-game, something we've been asking for for so long? It's better to actually have this feature than to not have it at all, and I think that's the point that I kind of want to make here. They're going to realize that grinding multiple Pokemon to level 100 is going to take too much time just to have the IVs, as well as the base breeding. You need to breed the Pokemon initially to get egg moves, to get a nature, and to also potentially get an ability. Hey, look at that. He made the realization between the last video and this one that breeding is actually good for something other than natures. Huh, guess he did learn. So, this is just going to make the process longer, and it's not going to solve anything, as well as the other things I talk about in this video. So, hope you guys enjoy. Well, I, I, I'll probably enjoy it about as much as the last one, but let's get into it anyway, why not? Welcome back, Wolfpack Burleson. I want to make a follow-up video to my hyper-training, responding to comments since a lot of people do not understand that this is the worst thing to happen to Pokemon. Also, when it comes like the dislike ratio on the video, I've been seeing a lot of comments saying I'm wrong because lots of dislikes, but that really doesn't make any sense. If you're just disliking this video, it doesn't change fact. It doesn't change what's the circumstances of what's going on here. And please, if you're disliking, unsubscribe. You are of no value to me, your negativity is not welcome on this channel, and if you're just like here to only subscribe and dislike a video, then your opinion doesn't matter at all because if you're going in with negative intentions, that's not going to change my content in any way. So basically, if I don't like the video, I should leave right now because you don't want to hear negative criticism of your video. Huh, yeah, sounds like same, just, just sounds like great logic to me, everybody. I, I'm, I'm gone. I'm leaving. That's it. Goodbye. That door slam wasn't loud enough. Hold on. That one was probably better. These dislikers are worthless. Please unsubscribe. Um, here we go. Personally, I think this feature was meant to make it easier on the few legitimate players and make cheating unnecessary because obtaining Pokemon with good IVs is easier now. Anyways. This comment, and anyone that agrees with this comment, misses the point entirely. That misses the point of what, exactly? They introduced this feature in order for it to be easier to get IVs. 
you're being completely paranoid right now by thinking that they did it because they don't care about hackers. You seem to think that anybody who supports this feature injects Pokemon or something. Like, you're being completely paranoid now and thinking that the hackers are out to get you. The big, scary, injecting boogeyman is here to come and get you. No, this feature is introduced to make it easier to get IVs because there's, there's probably going to be another legal Pokemon reset, like I said earlier. All this does is say, you know what, hackers, go do your thing. We're just going to try to catch up the legitimate players. That doesn't make any sense, that we should be trying to punish and remove hacking instead of level the playing field. Even so, you have to admit, leveling the playing field is a good first step, right? I mean, that way that everybody's pretty much, everybody's happy this way, except for you. And that's like what all these this support effectively says, you know? Agreed, they're making it easier for honest players and not rewarding hackers. Well, this is absolutely wrong, because they are rewarding hackers by making it easier to cheat. Yes, it's easier to cheat, because now all you have to do is hack in an item. You know what else it's easier to do now? Raise IVs legitimately. I mean, the two are kind of connected here. If you make it easier in-game, they're, they're also making it easier to do it non-legitimately. Every game demands sacrifice. Like, here's my philosophy. Every game demands sacrifice, especially if you're playing it competitively. Look at any leaderboard, any top player of every game. It's not like freaking pressing a button and then immediately becoming a challenger tier in League of Legends or becoming a professional CSGO player or anything like that. No, it demands hard work and sacrifice. Did you just compare running around in circles on a bike at the Battle Resort to breed breeding Pokemon to getting good at a game like League of Legends because... You're not immediately good at the game. Here's the thing though, Verlissify. Getting good at Pokemon also takes practice in battle, which injecting Pokemon allows you to do faster. And this this also brings up the question, does this mean that games that were made for competitive reason, like let's say Rocket League, for example, aren't competitive because you're immediately ready to jump into the game and start playing against other people? Or Smash Bros. even. Like, yeah, sure, there's a few unlockable characters, but they're really easy to get. Does this mean that Smash Bros. isn't competitive? Does this mean that most fighting games aren't competitive? No, it doesn't. You are making stuff up. And I feel every game, even a game based for children like Pokemon, is no different. They're, like, all games should be seen universally competitive. Does this also apply to single-player games like say, Mega Man 2. Is Mega Man 2 a competitive game now? Anyway, moving on, at this point I actually ended up cutting out a lot of uh, what Verlissify said in the rest of this video, because he kind of went in circles quite a bit in it, and just repeated what he said with different words, and a lot of the comments were also pretty much the same, and I just didn't want to have to sit, you guys sit through all that, because otherwise this video would be like 50 minutes long, which is probably already going to be close to. Uh, this feature particularly like, looks like it was created for people that want to use Hidden Power in their movesets. Actually, this doesn't make any sense, because Hidden Power is based off of IVs, so would it change the Hidden Power of the Pokemon to go through Hyper Training? Y you do realize that changing the IVs of a Pokemon then changes Hidden Power, since Hidden Power is based on IVs, right? Right? Do you really not see the connection there? If you refuse to IV train and you refuse to put the hours into work, then you deserve to lose in a competitive environment where other people have sacrificed and then dedicated to the game. You deserve to lose if you decided to use a faster route that makes your Pokemon no different from anybody else who took the longer route. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Many people have dropped out. A lot of people have just given up, said, screw it, I don't want to waste this time, I'm going to cheating. And all those hard players, all those spirit of the game people that value Pokemon more than anything else, just got screwed over. All those poor, poor people. Won't somebody please think of the children? Just because people went to a faster method doesn't make the people who do the longer method any less of a person. It just means that they use a the longer method and would probably be better off doing the faster method. This, this is just the easy button. This is just press, win team, GG. So does that mean that if I make a team of six, like, bottom tier Pokemon, like Magikarp, Farfetch'd, 
shellos, I guess, etc., that I'm going to win automatically because I injected them? No, it doesn't mean that at all. So it's just an effect they didn't think? I doubt that. I severely doubt that. They would have had to have known what this could do. That if you make it easier for breeders, then by proxy you're going to be making it easier for the cheaters as well. Yeah, but earlier in the video you said to this one commenter that he was wrong that it makes it easier for breeders. But here you just admitted that it's easier for breeders. Do you, do you not even realize when you contradict yourself, Relicify? This just makes the game more easy. Who wants to breed for four days? This goes back to the mentality of competitive. Oh boy, here he goes again. The game isn't supposed to be easy. Competitive Pokemon is not supposed to be free. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be something that requires sacrifice. It's... I would argue that having your thumb on up on the D-pad for hours on end is not sacrifice. Spending the time to learn how to predict good team building synergies, what the meta is currently like, and how to counter the relevant threats. That is what is important, and that's what takes sacrifice. Not the breeding. Easier method of legitimate training in the game will bring more players to the competitive scene. Again, this doesn't really matter because a lot of comments I've seen are trying to support that, oh, by doing this, they're going to make more people buy the game. But he didn't say that it would make more people buy the game. He said that it would bring more people to the competitive scene. You idiot. Okay, maybe idiot is a bit of a harsh word there, but you get the point. He did not say that they were going to buy the game. I severely doubt that. Very few people buy Pokemon, if anyone buys Pokemon, to only play it competitively. People play Pokemon because they love Pokemon. They want to enjoy the story. They want to battle their friends. They don't go, man, I'm going to buy this game only so I can spend an hour or so I can spend a week breeding and then go to VGC and win it. And right there, Verlicify just admits that breeding is tedious and just connected with all of the hackers on a personal level. Anyway, that's all that I have to really show you that I'm going to respond to for this video. I'll have the links down in the description if you want to go check them out yourself and think your own thoughts on them instead of just hearing mine. And again, he deleted my comment on his video calling him out. wonder if he'll flag this one for copyright. <laughs> anyway, that's all for now. I will just leave you guys with this to close.